Next thing that we can do is we can apply some fluid uh, container, right? So you can go to effects, fluid, and then 3D container, right? So make sure the emitter are off, right? Now, uh, what we want is we want the fluid to be coming off from the particle, right? So we need to attach the fluid to the particle. Okay, so every time the particle is being generated, uh, the fluid uh, came from that particle. Okay, so I select this particle, that particle, and shift select the fluid. Then you can go to fluid and then emit from object. Now, while you are uh, at it, you can change this container to be other resize. Right, and if you press play, you'll get something like this. Right, now as you can see, the fluid are uh, coming off from the particle, right? So I'm both from the top particle and the bottom particle, right? So if I let it play, I'll get something like this. Right, now the next bit that we can do is that we're gonna set up the fluid so we can hide the particle so we don't need it for now, right? We can also hide these tornado shapes, right? So you can go to fluid. And you can go to the emitter, right? So I want to change the voxel density from 1 to 50 and change that to 1, right? And make sure you also change for the second uh, emitter, right? So you can go to 50, put this back to 1, right? And if I press 6 and replay the simulation, I'll get something like this. Okay, so the fluid is more dense. Now, the next thing we can do, we can also increase the turbulence. So I'm going to press 1, and I go back here, and I press 1. Okay, and replay and see if there's any um, difference. Now, all use value, uh, feel free to adjust according to your liking. Okay, so I recommend you, like, every time you change something, you we play the simulation so you know like what kind of effect does the attribute do okay so I am going to increase the resolution of the container maybe from right to hundred to a thousand right and change that to eight and see if there's any big difference right So while you add it right in this fluid container, I can also change the density. Right, 1.5, 0 and 10, then see. Okay, now um I'm gonna go back to the particle. So I'm gonna hide the fluid, right? Show the particle. Okay. And I'm going to increase the rate from 100 to 1000. Okay, so I'm going to click this emitter. And if you look at this setting, right, I'm going to increase this from 100 to 1000. Okay, the same thing with the second particle. Right there, Oops, emitter, and 1000. Right, so more particles are being generated per second. Okay, so I'll get something like this. Now, if you're happy with the setting of the particle, we can lock this by using this encage system. So if you go to encage, create new cage, uh, an object, right, and click the box. So what it means, like Maya will try to create the simulation and record it to the hard drive, which means you don't have to re-simulate every time you press play this. Okay, so it's very handy uh, tools. So everything will be stored in the hard drive. Okay, so I'm going to put this in a folder. Um, okay, maybe um, particle number two. Right, and the file name will be in particle version two. Right, and press um, apply. But before you press apply, make sure like both of the particle are being selected. Then you can press apply. So another good thing like if you're using NCAGE is that 
since your simulation are being stored in a hard drive, Maya don't need that much calculation when you press play. Okay, you just need to load the data from the hard drive, which is pretty uh, handy and it's easy on your machine. Right, so since all the data are being stored in a hard drive, I can scrub through the timeline without having issue because all these are already being stored. Right? Okay, so I'm going to hide the particle and show the fluid. Right, and I'll get something like this. Okay, so I'm going to go to my fluid emitter and I'm going to apply the max distance. Do the same thing with the other one. Right, and I'll get something like that. Okay, so the initial setup for these seems seems okay. So the next bit that we're going to do is we're going to apply some volume curve. All right, but before we apply the volume curve, we need to apply some a vertical curve. All right, so I'm going to create my vertical curve. Okay, using the same method. So it's curve tool then CV. Okay, now when I'm doing this vertical curve, I'm going to press or hold X so that curve will snap to the grid. Okay, so it'll be like this. Right, so it's perfect vertical curve. And I can apply the reset pivot, delete history, and freeze transform. Now, I'm going to replay the fluid. So this is what it does before you're applying the volume curve, right? Then I want to apply the volume curve. Okay, so make sure you select the vertical and the fluid container. Then you apply the volume curve. All right now, uh, I want to apply the setting. So make sure you select the volume axis field. Right now, you can apply this to a higher value. So magnitude is 25. Then section radius maybe 40. Now, as you can see, like 40 is too big in my case, right? So maybe in your case, 40 is good, but do change the setting according to your setup. So maybe 20, 20 is good for me, right? So it's not too big, right? Something that is like kind of in ratio to the tornado shapes, right? Now, the next one is that we want to change this around axis. So I'm going to put this minus 10. So what it does is it will follow the direction or where the particle are rotating. So if I replay the particle, I'll get something like this, right? So it's going from the left to the right, right? So it's a setup to minus 10. So if I change this to 10, it will go from the right to the left, which is uh, reverse of the particle does, right? So that's incorrect. So what you want is to be aligned with the particle. So let's put this minus 10, right? And I'll get something like that. Now, I'm um, going to hide the particle again. Show the fluid, hide the tornado shapes, right? And I get something like this, right? Uh, you should notice that there is more wavy in the fluid, right? That is due to the volume curve that we create and apply to the fluid. Now, as you can see that the fluid simulation is very laggy, right? Uh, so we can also apply the same method to the fluid. We can apply the same end cage, right? But rather than choosing the an object, you can create the fluid, right? So which means that Maya will store this fluid simulation inside your hard drive. I'm gonna stop this, right? So that way it does not need to replay or re-simulate things. Okay, so I'm gonna select the fluid, right? And I'm gonna create new cage, but this time I'm gonna create Maya fluid, 
right again they're gonna ask you where to save so maybe I'm gonna rename this to fluid version 2 right and fluid 2 right make sure you are select the fluid when you want to create the cage right and you press apply now I'm gonna pause the video because this process will take a while right my fluid simulation look like okay so it's a bit wild so I can change the setting according to your liking so when you can go back to your volume axis and adjust the magnitude maybe or you can adjust the section radius all right so it's really up to you now if you do change some attributes right since you already um, create an end cage I suggest that you create another end cage because if not Maya will just keep replaying the cage that is being stored in your hard drive already okay so if we do any adjustment like uh, increase this or reduce then you have to uh, create another fluid right and I'm just gonna show some example right maybe version 3 and right and Maya's gonna ask you like do you want to add and blend or replace I usually click replace because I'm just yeah I'm gonna create thing from scratch okay so I'm gonna stop the video for now and the next bit is we can put some shading and color to the tornado.